In this lesson, we're going to dive into edit mode and take a look at the tools at our disposal. We'll begin with three basic but very useful tools, extrude, inset, and the knife tool. I'll head over to the toolbox on the left here. In case you forgot, you can hide or reveal the toolbox by hitting the T key. To make things clearer, I'll expand the toolbox so that we can see the names of each of these tools. I'll hover my mouse over the right edge, and as the cursor transforms into this double-headed arrow, I'll click and drag. The buttons will first shift and then realign and expand, revealing the names of each tool. The tools are currently contextual to object mode. So with our cube selected, Let's hit Tab to toggle into Edit Mode. The toolbox now changes to show us edit specific tools, and there are a few. Let's go down to Extrude. You might have noticed that there's a small white arrow in the corner, which means that this tool has other options hidden. Let's take a moment to look at these. Just click and hold on the Extrude tool, and they should pop out. By default, it's set to extrude region. But we can also extrude manifold, normals, individual, and to cursor. I'll focus on extrude region for now. I'll switch my selection mode from vertex to faces by hitting the number three on the keypad. This gizmo appears, a yellow circle with the plus sign. And if we click and drag on that, we can pull out a new face directly from this selected face. This ring allows you to pull a face out in any direction, but the face will remain parallel to the original one that you extruded from. When this happens, a second smaller circle will appear, and by clicking and dragging on this, you can adjust the position after the fact. Note that you can extrude edges and vertices also. Extrusion is so fundamental to mesh modeling that it has its own easy to remember hotkey, E. So if we're working in edit mode and we haven't even selected the extrude tool, we can just hit E and this will allow us to extrude whatever's selected. You can also hit Alt E and that brings up a menu with all of the hidden options to this tool. So you can choose those on the fly. Some additional shortcuts that we've seen in previous lessons will also work with this tool. So for example, you can constrain the position using Control and Shift for incremental or precise placement. If you extrude a region using the circle, you can hit X, Y, or Z to constrain that extrusion to the global axes. Note, however, double X or Y or Z won't work with this tool. Let's look at some other options to extrude geometry, starting with manifold. Now in 3D modeling, a manifold mesh has edges shared by no more than two faces. A non-manifold mesh, therefore, is where an edge shares more than two faces. The easy example to demonstrate here is if we select an edge and extrude it, and look back at the original edge that we extruded this from, you can see how this now shares three faces. In general, you want to avoid non-manifold meshes, as they can cause many issues downstream. I'm going to undo or clear my history, so we're returned to our default cube, and I'll switch our extrude tool to manifold. If we just select a single face and pull the face along this direction, it doesn't seem like it does anything except scale this cube in this axis. And this is because the manifold geometry it's looking for doesn't yet exist. I'm going to switch the extrude tool back to region and extrude another face. Now I can select a face like this one, for example, and switch back to manifold. And as I push or pull it, see what happens. It creates geometry along this face's normal and automatically dissolves any edges that might otherwise have been created. Now we can do this by just using the region extrude tool but this would involve more steps and we'd have to dissolve or delete edges as we go. So you can see how this option saves you a lot of time. We spoke a bit about normals in a previous lesson. 
And here we have an option to perform an extrusion along a normal. I'll also enable our vertex and face normals to be visible in our edit overlays. I may have to increase the size a little bit. I'm going to adjust some edges by grabbing them and moving them about so that the geometry of this cube isn't all perpendicular and aligned with global dimensions. Now we only get the gizmo here without the plus sign or the circle because we only have one option here, the face, vertex, or edge normal. Yep, vertices and edges also have a normal direction. If we select multiple faces, it will average out the direction of all the normals. And as we drag these faces out, we'll get some info at the top of the 3D viewport that hints at some hotkeys we can use as we work. Let's try some of these as we're dragging out an extrusion. I can hold down Alt as I extrude, or click S, and this will switch to an even thickness extrusion. Alt, in this case, only retains the thickness as you press it. So if we let go, it goes back to its normal average. S, however, toggles this even thickness extrusion of normals on or off. Extrude Individual allows you to select multiple components and just extrude these along their own normals. And finally, Extrude to Cursor allows you to click on a spot anywhere in 3D space where you want the extrusion to end. You can shift select multiple faces or control click to deselect faces. And each time you click, the extrusion will rotate and place the new face. That just about covers it for Extrude. The next tool down is called Inset. Now this is somewhat related to Extrude. For example, to create an inset, you could select a face, extrude with our E key, and then before we adjust this position, simply hit S to scale. But the inset tool does all of this process in one go and gives you some options for better control. So let's try this now. We'll select a face and select the inset tool. Click anywhere inside this yellow circle and drag. As you use the inset tool, some more options become available in the status bar down here. Let's try some of these. As I click and drag, I'll hit control, and this allows me to pull or push the face along its normal, either inwards or outwards. Let's commit this so we have an inset face. And now let's inset another face, but this time hit O. This creates an edge loop outside of this face, or an outset face. Let's extrude an edge. Obviously, we're creating a non-manifold mesh. Now, if we inset this face and toggle B, the inset changes from scaling an even face in from all the edges to only scaling away from the attached face. Now, if more than one edge shared a face, then something like this happens. Finally, if you select more than one face and want each of these to have an inset face, you can click on I and create separate insets for each. These next two tools we'll cover in more detail in a future lesson, which is why we're skipping them for now and going directly to the knife tool. It only has one hidden variant known as bisect, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. The hotkey for knife is K, for knife, obviously. And if we either select it from the toolbox or hit K, the moment we're in this tool, the status bar shows us a lot of useful options. In short, the knife tool allows us to draw new edges, creating vertices at every intersection as we click. Once you've created a cut, you enter to commit that, or you can hit escape to cancel it. You can double left click to close an edge loop right round or use the C key to cut straight edges right through your mesh. There are options to constrain, snap and even measure the edges you're cutting in. Because of the amount of options available, it's way more fun to just try these out on your own as they mostly make intuitive sense. Bisect basically does what the knife cut tool does, creates a plane through your selected geometry, and its options are visible in the last active operations dialog box. The arrow points along the normal 
of this invisible bisecting plane. And inner or outer are in relation to this arrow. Because normals face outwards, the inner is on the back face. You can choose to fill in the plane should you wish. Now in combination, just these three tools will allow you to create some cool and complex stuff. Let's try out an example. I'm going to cut a shape on a face here that's not attached to any other edge. I'm going to inset this new Engon and then select the edge ring and extrude this. Now I'm going to select this loop of faces and do an inset, hold down control and push these faces in a little. Now you can see how that didn't take a lot of time or effort. Before proceeding to the next lesson, why don't you try to play around with just these tools and create something for yourself. Experiment with any of the extra options that you might see in the status bar, or use a hotkey to bring up a contextual menu and switch tools on the fly. Now as you work, you might find that some of these methods work better than others, and that's perfectly okay. What works for you may not necessarily work for me when it comes to speedy workflow. When you're ready to take a look at some other editing tools, let's hop over to the next lesson. Music